What's up everybody, Ross here from Gamertag and welcome to our very first episode of our new videocast series, Gamertag Talks. So what is Gamertag Talks? Well basically it's an opportunity for us to create some new content exclusive for our um, online community and our YouTube subscribers where we get to talk about gaming news, reviews, unboxings and basically anything that really interests us and things that we've been playing or things that we've seen um, basically in the industry. The goal of course is to make this a weekly um, video, uh, show. It may turn into uh, every two weeks but we're basically going to try and stick to a schedule of once every week and it is really just a bit of an experiment. We're all wearing our feet here and we're just going to have some fun with it. It's going to be completely unscripted as you can no doubt tell from uh, my delivery already uh, tonight but basically we're going to have some fun as I said and it's going to be unscripted. We're going to have a few topics that we're going to check off and just really have some just really kind of good back and forth with you the community. So what I was thinking about for our very first episode tonight, um, it is the end of the year and uh, 2017 is almost upon us. So how cool would it be just to have a bit of a discussion about our best games of the year? Now this doesn't necessarily uh, need to be games that have released this year, but it is things that we have played you know, for the first time this year. So for our first episode, what I think it would be pretty good to start off with is we have a number of categories here that are going to probably take a while, but we're going to divide it up into multiple parts. And so the very first category that I'm going to kick off with is Best Shooter. Now, shooting games um, have always been a staple of the console industry, and they've actually done really, really well. Every year you've got the usual staples of Battlefield or Call of Duty, and you sometimes get a Halo thrown in there as well. But basically, they are the big three. Now, this year, we have been spoiled to quite a lot. We've got Titanfall 2, we've got Overwatch, we've got um, Doom making its comeback, and of course, we've got the, the normal entries of Battlefield in the shape of Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty's latest iteration and in Infinite Warfare. So this is probably the most hotly contested category um, that whoever you speak to will always have a favourite, whether it's Battlefield, whether it's Call of Duty, whether it's Halo. Sadly, there was no Halo this year, of course, um, but we did have some new entries. Like I said, Doom made a massive, massive comeback, and of course, Overwatch was the big one that came out of kind of nowhere, had been in early development, um, early access on the PC, and then eventually made it to um, the, the console space as well. So how do you decide what should be nominated for best shooter category. Well, my picks are Doom, because it was absolutely brilliant. It's probably the fastest, most intense shooter I think I've ever played. A real return to its roots. And of course, it had one of the most awesome heavy metal soundtracks I think I've ever heard in a video game. Um, next up is Overwatch. So this is a game, as I said, it was an early development, early access on Steam and on uh, the PC community for a good, maybe what, a year and a half probably, before it eventually came into beta on the consoles. And out of nowhere, on, certainly in the console space, a community just rose up all around it and they absolutely love it. And it's so colourful and so full of personality and character. And of course, there are over 20 characters for you to master, all different, all complement each other very, very much a team-based game in the vein of Team Fortress. And basically, it just blew the franchise, it blew the, uh, the, the shooter industry kind of wide open as to what was possible and what could be a success in uh, the FPS kind of marketplace. And of course, we have Battlefield 1. That gets a nomination because it is totally different from what everybody was expecting. They were all expecting it to follow the trait of getting more and more futuristic in the military shooter kind of vein. But what DICE did was take it right back to um, an era which hasn't really been explored before in um, the, the shooter genre. And of course that is World War I. And my goodness, what a shooter it was. If you like team-based shooters and spectacle and epic 64-player battles with destructible environments, that is really, really something to behold. So that gets the nod as a nomination for the best shooter category. And of course, finally, um, I'm going to throw in there Titanfall 2. Now, Anybody who knows us at Gamertag, we are huge fans of Titanfall and it is actually that shooter that made us purchase an Xbox One in, this, in the first six months of it originally going on sale. Um, it was phenomenal. It reinvented the, the shooter genre to, to a degree as well for what we can expect for online multiplayer. Um, it scrapped the single player um, campaign entirely and I guess that kind of went against that a little bit and it was the only thing that people were really screaming out for is a really, really good single player campaign. So how ecstatic we were when 
um, it was announced that Respawn Entertainment announced that Titanfall 2 was going to get a really, really strong single player campaign as well as really refining and embellishing those excellent, excellent multiplayer mechanics that, um, that everybody um, knew and loved. That Titan combat mixed in with the parkour and uh, mixed in with a great single player campaign. So that is our um, pick for best shooter category, uh, the nominees, but there can't only be one. So which is the game that you think should be the best shooter of the year? Well, I mean, it's so difficult because this is the most, probably the most hotly contested um, category in the console space, depending on who you obviously talk to. And um, I know Scott Watson, my, uh, the co-founder of Gamertag, is a big, big Battlefield 1 fan, so he would probably vote for that. And um, I've got to say, coming into doing this, this very, very first episode of Gamertag Talks, I was pretty much convinced that I was going to give it to Titanfall 2 because in terms of sheer, pure enjoyment, and getting in, having a blast, stomping about in a bloody great mech. Um, I was going to give it to Titanfall 2 because it is a so, so good fun uh, to play online with friends or even solo. And it had a really, really gripping single player campaign. Um, maybe not as incredible as what a lot of outlets are kind of deeming it as. It's like this is the second coming of first, first person shooters. I don't think it is probably that good, but it is an absolutely brilliant single player campaign. But I'm going to have to give it to Doom. I've been playing it constantly the past few days um, after having it sitting on my, my pile of shame. And I've got to say, Doom is just so over the top, so brilliant. A great, great um, reboot um, back to form for what it is at the very heart of what makes Doom, Doom. And it is just incredible. If you haven't checked it out, then do check it out, please. There is so much going on here that is just brilliant about it. There is wave after wave of enemies. It is pure arena-based combat for its multiplayer. It's got things like the snap map where you can create your own levels and maps and share them with a the community. Um, the mechanics themselves are so fast and so fluid. It really, really does feel like um, a reinvention of the first-person uh, shooter genre with modern mechanics but ramped up to 11 but also feeling like an old school shooter where you carry multiple weapons around with you all in one go and you can hot swap them out with a weapon wheel. Um, you've got the glory kill mechanic, which is just incredible to behold. Um, again, that level design is brilliant. It's based around arena and movement. It's this dance that you do constantly. is um, sizing up your opponents, uh, your enemies, the demons from hell, whether it's a cyber demon, a hell knight, a caca demon, um, of course, Pinky trying to ram you. It's really, really quite spectacular, a reboot. Um, so for that, I've got to give it to Doom because it is quite, quite stunning. So do check it out. And that gives us, brings us to the end of our best shooter category. So next up is going to be best racing game.